Wonderful. Welcome to Baker Memorial United Methodist Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. Okay, it's a little gray, but you know what? Inside, we're bursting with light and joy, right? I am Reverend Becky Neighbor. And I am Reverend Dr. John Lozer. It is a great privilege and pleasure to be in worship with you all once again this morning. We want to welcome, we want to extend an especially warm greeting to our visitors, and we have a baby here to baptize, and I want to welcome all of you out in internet land. We have a couple things, actually just very few things to talk about, but what I want to point out is, for those of you who don't know, is there's this what's happening sheet, because there is always something happening with the Lord. And uh, you can go online and print it out at bakerchurch.org. There's lots of things on here, so I encourage you to read this. We're not going to go over them all. But there is one thing that Pastor John wants to talk about. Just one thing for today. The trustees are calling for help for a church workday on the 15th, rain or shine. There will be jobs both inside and outside the building. If you have an opportunity to come and do part of the day or all of it, it's 9 a.m. to noon, three hours, on May 15th, Saturday. Please come and help the trustees do a spring cleanup day. All right? Would you please join me in prayer as we begin our worship this morning? Good morning, Lord. We are grateful and thankful for your presence among us today. Lord, open our hearts and our minds and anoint us to worship you in spirit and in truth, that we may please you with our worship and receive the blessing that you desire to bring into our lives today. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. And would you continue in prayer as we listen to the prelude?
Won't you please join with me in our opening call to worship? Bless the Lord, O people of God, with all that is in us. Let us bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all God's benefits. God forgives our sins and heals our diseases. God redeems us from our suffering, crowns us with steadfast love and mercy, and satisfies us with good throughout our lives. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. And amen. Won't you please stand as you are able for our opening songs of worship. cross before me, the world behind, no turning back, raise the banner high, it's not for me, it's all for you. Let the heaven shake and split the sky, let the people clap their hands and cry, it's not for us, it's all for you. to us but to your name be the glory not to us but to your name be the glory our hearts unfold before your throne the only place for those who know it's not for us it's all for you send your holy fire on this offering let our worship burn for the world to see it's not for us it's all for you not to us but to your to us, but to your name be the glory, not to us, but to your name be the glory, not to us, but to your name be the glory. The earth is shaking, the mountain shouting, it's all for you. Crashing, the sun is raging, it's all for you. The universe is spinning and singing, it's all for you. Your children dancing, 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 it's all for you, it's all for you. to us, but to your name be the glory, not to us, but to your name be the glory, not to us, but to your name be the glory, not to us. each other a holy wave and also wave to that camera over there because there's folks out in internet land that want to see you. And please be seated. This morning we do have the privilege of baptizing a new child into the family of God. So I want to invite the Bauda family and their sponsors to come forward. Oh, hello there. Hi. Oh, look 
Let us begin. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if you'd like to follow along with me, it's up behind me, or in your hymnals on page 33. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this, all this is God's gift offered to us without price. We present, it should be on. We present Benjamin George Bauda for baptism. So come forward a little bit. I'm going <laughs> to ask you some questions. The congregation here knows that I just love to ask questions because I like to challenge folks. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, please say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, please say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Jesus Christ is open to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, please say, I do. And will you continue to nurture Benjamin in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, that he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself and to profess his faith openly and to lead a Christian life? If so, please say, I will. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I am too. Will you... As sponsor of Benjamin George, will all of you, as sponsors of Benjamin George, support and encourage him in his Christian walk of life? Will you? We will. Oh, come on. <laughs> Say it louder like you mean it. We'll do it again. Will you? Oh, There oh. you go. Beautiful. Do you as Christ's body of the church reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ. Do you? We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? Please join with me. With God's, God's help, help, we, we will, will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. Christ. We, we will, will surround, surround Benjamin with a community of love and forgiveness that he may grow in his trust of God and be found faithful in his service to others. We will pray for him that he may be true disciple who will walk in the way that leads to life. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and the New Testaments. Do you, do all of you, believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Would you join me in a prayer over the baptismal waters? Lord God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, ever-present Holy Spirit, I pray that as we baptize Benjamin George into your family of God, that you will use this water as a symbolic cleansing of his sin and that he may become a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. For it is in his name we pray. Amen. Are you ready? Look at him <laughs> smile. Right up at the camera. Good. Very good. Everybody out there in internet land can see. <laughs> so we're going to put some water on your forehead. Is that okay? We'll see, won't we? Ready? Benjamin George, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Okay, you can see them up. Now it is our joy. Wait a minute, wait a minute. No, you're going to do something you're else. You're going to do something else. <laughs> I'm missing He's like got me. some water hanging down on his forehead. Uh -huh. Benjamin George. May you be blessed and empowered by the Holy Spirit to follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Now, now it is our joy to welcome our new brother in Christ, Benjamin George Bauda. Through baptism, baptism you, you are, are incorporated, incorporated by the, by the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as member of the family of Christ. Would you welcome our new brother in Christ, Benjamin George Bauda. Pardon me. I'm going to give her the bear. And the... Yes. Wait before you go, Mom. This is for you. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Look at that smile. Oh, that was That's worth it, you. wasn't it, to get that little bear? And this is his baptismal certificate. Thank you so much. So... And now, as a response of worship, an act of worship, to give God glory for the work that God is doing in Benjamin, would you stand as you are willing and able and sing with us hymn number 152, I Sing the Almighty Power of God. I sing the almighty power of God that made the mountains rise.
Amen. Would you please be seated for the Old Testament readings? The Old Testament, the first Old Testament reading is from Genesis with selected verses from chapter one in the New International Version. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. And it was so. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so. And God said, let the water teem with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kind, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. Then God said, let us make humans in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. The second Old Testament reading is from the book of Deuteronomy with selected verses from Deuteronomy chapter 30 in the Good News translation. Here, the prophet Moses speaks to the children of Israel while they're in the wilderness, but just before they go into the promised land. I have now given you a choice between a blessing and a curse. When all these things have happened to you and you are living among the nations where the Lord your God has scattered you, you will remember the choice I gave you. If you and your descendants will turn back to the Lord and with all your heart obey his commands that I am giving you today, then the Lord your God will have mercy on you. He will bring you back from the nations where he has scattered you and he will make you prosperous again. The Lord your God will give you and your descendants obedient hearts so that you will love him with all your heart, and you will continue to live in that land. The Lord will make you prosperous in all that you do. You will have many children and a lot of livestock, and your fields will produce abundant crops. He will be as glad to make you prosperous as he was to make your ancestors prosperous. But you will have to obey him with all your heart. I am now giving you the choice between life and death, between God's blessing and God's curse. And I call heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Choose life. Love the Lord your God. Obey and be faithful to him. And then you and your descendants will live long in the land that he promised to give to your ancestors. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The word of God for the people of God. And would you stand as you are willing and able for our next song of worship, Love the Lord. heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. 
with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. With all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. With all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. With all my strength, I will love you, Lord, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. My goodness, we were rocking. I like it. You know what? We. We are abundantly blessed by God through the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit transforms our hearts. It calls us and it teaches us how to love like Jesus. And what's more, the Spirit works with our spirits to give us that peace and that joy that goes beyond our earthly understanding. So we invite you this morning to show, to respond and to reflect your gratitude to the Lord with a financial gift to support the many, many ministries here at Baker Church. Let us contemplate and let us make an offering unto the Lord.
We do give you thanks and praise, O Lord God, for the great gifts that you have given to us. And we thank you, Lord, that you have given us the desire to love and serve you with our whole heart. And we ask you, Lord, that you would lead and guide and direct us to return some of those gifts that you have given to us back to your church for the ministries that you have called us to do. Lead us and guide us in using those gifts so that others may come to know you as Lord and Savior and become part of your kingdom. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Would you please be seated for the New Testament reading? Reading comes to us today from the book of Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verses 13 through 15, in the contemporary English version. My friends, the Lord loves you, and it is only natural for us to thank God for you. God chose you to be the first ones to be saved. His Spirit made you holy and put your faith in the truth. God used our preaching as his way of inviting you to share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, that's why you must remain faithful and follow closely what we taught you in person and by our letters. This, this is the word of God for the people of God. comes to us from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 23 through 26 in the contemporary English version. Jesus said, If anyone loves me, they will obey me. Then my Father will love them, and we will come to them and live in them. But anyone who doesn't love me won't obey me. What they have heard me say doesn't really come from me, but from the Father who sent me. I have told you these things while I am still with you. But the Holy Spirit will come and help you, because the Father will send the Spirit to take my place. The Spirit will teach you everything and will remind you of what I said while I was with you. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Today, I am going to begin a fairly lengthy sermon series on what I believe and why I believe it as a way and a means to help you better understand who I am and what has led me to this point in my life, and perhaps maybe to help you along the way in your journey of faith better understand what you believe and why you believe it. This series is going to be based in the answers that I gave to the Board of Ordained Ministry in the annual conference for my ordination questions. And the passages that were read this morning, the two Old Testament, one New Testament, and the Gospel, come from the first question that I answered. How do I understand God? 
Now, I've titled this, pat, this sermon, The Bible Reveals God to Us, because basically that's where my understanding comes from. The first passage in Genesis repeatedly says, And God said, and it was so. God spoke everything into existence. And so I believe that God's word is true and authentic. The second passage of the Old Testament in Deuteronomy talks about being obedient to God's will and God's laws that have been laid down for us for our good. They're not just a bunch of rules that we're supposed to obey just because we're supposed to obey them. They're for our good. That's why they were given. The Thessalonians passage that Becky read speaks about how the Holy Spirit leads us. The Spirit made you holy and put your faith in truth. It is by the leading of the Holy Spirit that any one of us has chosen to come to God. That's God's grace working in our lives. And then the passage that I read in the book of John, Jesus tells us our love for God is manifesting in our lives through our willingness to live by God's will and commandments. So we basically have two options when it comes to knowing God. It is either through revelation, which comes from God directly, or speculation. Either God speaks to us through the Bible, or we simply make our own assumptions. That is, we form an opinion with little or no support to back up that opinion. The Bible reveals God through the writings of inspired people that were close to God. Their focus on God opened their hearts and their minds to be influenced by the Holy Spirit. Thus, they had a special ability to clearly hear God's revelation that is recorded in the Bible. Now, I'll give you one statement from our Book of Discipline. Does anybody know what the Book of Discipline is? Some of you, oh, some of you do know what the Book of Discipline is. The Book of Discipline is basically where our faith and the way we live out our faith is written down for us to follow as a denomination, the United Methodist Church. The Book of Discipline has several articles under what is titled the Confession of Faith. The one that speaks about the Bible says this, The Holy Bible, Old and New Testaments, reveals the Word of God so far as it is necessary for our salvation. It is to be received through the Holy Spirit as the true rule and guide for faith and practice. Whatever is not revealed in or established by the Holy Scriptures is not to be made an article of faith, nor is it to be taught as essential to salvation. Salvation is the goal. Salvation simply means that instead of being cursed and dying in the end, which is what that Deuteronomy passage talked about, we instead choose life. Did you hear Connie emphasize those words? Choose life. Life is chosen through our choice to receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. Now, I'm going to read three paragraphs of the statement that I wrote. This went to the Board of Ordained Ministry. 
And what the purpose of this was, was for them to understand my personal theology. What is it that I believe about God? Here are three paragraphs of that statement that I wrote. The Bible reveals God as triune. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three persons, one God. The Old Testament describes God as the creator of all things, hence the Genesis passage. The giver of laws that are intended for us to obey for our own good, hence the Deuteronomy passage. God is the one who chooses and calls individuals to glorify God and fulfill God's purposes in the world. God is the ever-present guide and caretaker of God's people, Israel. And all of us are grafted in as God's family. What we did here this morning with the baptism of Benjamin George Benjamin George was grafted into the family of God through baptism. He is now part of God's family. And he needs to be nurtured in the faith. And God is the one who disciplines those who rebel against God's laws. Hence, again, that Deuteronomy passage. It's about leading people away from rebellion and back to God. In the New Testament, God is revealed to us through God's Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the one who is fully God and fully human. Jesus taught us how to live lives that please God. He showed us the way to salvation and life everlasting in God's kingdom. The Holy Spirit is revealed in both the Old and the New Testaments as the one who works in the world to draw all people into right relationship with God. The Holy Spirit convicts us of our sin, helps us to stand against temptation, enlightens our understanding of God as revealed in Scripture, and empower us, empowers us to accomplish God's will. Above all this, Scripture reveals God as love. 1 John 4, 8 says, God is love, and anyone who doesn't love others has never known God. Hence the two greatest commandments, love God and love your neighbor. Jesus demonstrated the love of God in his earthly life by ministering to the whole person. Jesus ministered to people's lives, he ministered to their minds through his teaching. He ministered to their people, their bodies through healing their infirmities. And he ministered to people's spirits by inviting them into the kingdom of God. In other words, to become an adopted daughter or son of God in God's kingdom. Part of God's family. All of this belief began... In 1998, about 23 years ago, when I began studying the Bible using this book, Disciple. Disciple led me to read through very carefully in about 32 weeks the book of Genesis, the book of Exodus. Those are both in the Old Testament. And then two books in the New Testament, the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts. And what happened to me as I was reading through these passages, the Holy Spirit was working inside of me to transform my heart. To become less self-centered and more other-centered. What I remember of that time period in my life was I would read the assigned passages for each week and I would want more. And then I would read more. It was almost infectious. Where I would get information and understanding that I had never gotten before 
And it was just feeding me spiritually. And that's how God began to transform my heart and my mind to become more like Jesus Christ through my study of this word. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, he said one of the means of grace is to search the Scriptures. We would call that Bible study today, studying the Scriptures. But that's what I was doing. When I was in that first disciple class in 1998, 1999, I was searching the Scriptures because I wanted more of God. And this is where I found God, revealed to me in the Scripture. So this is where my belief comes from. Now, here's the question. Can we trust the Bible? I say yes. Because of my experience in being transformed through my study of it, I believe, yes, we can trust the Bible. And I have compiled the top ten reasons I believe we can trust the Bible. How many of you used to watch David Letterman? Okay, a bunch of you used to watch it. I used to record it on my old VHS VCR. And I would record it at 11.30 at night, and I would watch it the next day at about 5 o'clock when I came home from work. And he always had, every night, the top ten things of blah, 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 whatever it was. So I've compiled the top ten reasons I believe we can trust the Bible. Number ten. Should have a drum roll, right? Look, he's getting his sticks. He's going to do it. <laughs> the Bible is inspired. What does that mean? The definition of that comes from 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. It says this, All Scripture, all Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God, that's me, the servant of God, may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. The servant of God is all of you who choose to be servants of God. Number nine, the Bible is written through inspired people. The definition comes from 2 Peter, verse, uh, chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. It says this, Above all, you can trust I'm sorry, and you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things. For prophecy never had its origin in human will, but prophets, through, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So it's the Spirit that lives within us, and we believe when Benjamin Bauda was baptized this morning, the Spirit entered into him. So he has the Spirit now. All of us who were baptized and chose Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we have the Spirit living inside of us. It carries us along. And in those inspired writers of the Bible, the Holy Spirit carried them along as they wrote. Number eight, the Bible is true. Psalm 12, 6 says, The words and promises of the Lord are pure words, like silver refined in an earthen furnace, purified seven times. And Psalm, 11, Psalm 119, 89 says, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven, meaning it stands firm and is unchangeable. And then Proverbs 30, verses 5 and 6 says this, Every word of God is tested and refined like silver. God is a shield to those who trust and take refuge in him. Do not add to God's words, the proverb writer says, or God will repro reprove you and you will be found a liar. There are examples in the Scripture where there are people who called themselves prophets, but those who knew the Scriptures could see right through them. 
because they were not being carried along by the Holy Spirit. And the reason they could see through them was because they have the Holy Spirit living in them. Now a question comes to mind here. If the Bible isn't fully reliable at every point, how can we be certain it is fully reliable at any point? Either I trust the Bible in its entirety or I will struggle to trust it at all. This is where I have come to in my belief of the Scripture at this point in time. Number seven, the Bible is authoritative. James 1.22 says this, Prove yourselves doers of the word, actively and continually obeying God's precepts, and not merely listeners, that is, those who hear the word but fail to internalize its meaning, and deluding yourselves by unsound reasoning contrary to the truth. Even Jesus says in John 6, For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but to do the will of God who sent me. Even Jesus tells us that he is under the authority of God the Father to proclaim all that he proclaimed and do all that he did. Number six, the Bible is clear. Psalm 119.30 says, Understanding your word brings light to the minds of ordinary people. Now, we might have trouble with that one because sometimes we read through passages of Scripture that we just don't get. We don't understand them. They don't make sense. Peter addresses that in his second letter. He talks about Paul's writings where he says some of his remarks are hard to understand. But then he goes on and says this, And people who are ignorant and whose faith is weak twist them to their own destruction just as they do the other scriptures. So what do we do about that? Brings me to number five, reason number five. Understanding comes through the Holy Spirit. I've already talked about how the Spirit carries through those who wrote the scriptures to write them clearly. In Ephesians chapter 3, Paul writes this, Surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given for you. That is, the mystery made known to me by revelation, as I have already written briefly. In reading this, then you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to people in other generations, but it has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. Having the Holy Spirit gives each one of us some level of ability to read and understand the Scriptures for ourselves. They were written for all of us. And then the passage that I read in John the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of everything I have said to you. So Jesus does not walk with us on the earth today, but the Holy Spirit is right here interpreting the Scriptures for us as we read them. Number four, the Bible is sufficient for knowing God. Deuteronomy 29.29 29 says, The secret things belong to the Lord our God. Secret meaning they have not been revealed to us yet. But the things revealed belong to us and our children forever, that we may follow the, all the words of this law. All that has been revealed to us through the writers of the Scripture are what God chose to reveal to us so that we would know all that we needed to know to live as God's people. Number three, the Bible is powerful. 
Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew and then to the Gentile. This is what I mean by the Bible has the power to transform. This is what I experienced in that first disciple class. Hebrews 4, 7, I'm sorry, 4.12 says, For the word of God is alive and it's active. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. This is what it was doing to me as I was reading it all of those many years ago. As we read it, it challenges us to reconsider long-held beliefs and convicts us where our understanding is out of line for God's will for us. Number two, the Bible gives us hope and encouragement. Romans 15.4 says, For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through the endurance taught in the Scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we may have hope. How much encouragement do you get every week outside of your time with God? I have come to the place in my life once again where I cannot watch the news anymore. So I've just stopped watching it. Eventually, I'll probably start watching it again, but I've just come to a point. I can't watch it. It is so discouraging at this point. So instead, I spend more time in the Scripture to be encouraged. And number one, the Bible points us to Jesus. Jesus says in his, one of his many confrontations with the Pharisees, you study the Scriptures diligently because you think that in them you have eternal life. These are the very Scriptures that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. If you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. Jesus himself says that the Old Testament points to Jesus. And then we know the Gospels and the New Testament also point to Jesus. Jesus is the one that we look to as the perfecter of our faith. Here is the final statement that I wrote to the Board of Ordained Ministry. Twenty-five years ago, a popular saying asked the question, what would Jesus do? Anybody remember that question? At that time, I considered it a fad. Now I take it seriously. I desire to know how to address life situations, both great and small, in ways that will glorify God. This is because glorifying God the Father in all that he did is how the Gospels portray Jesus living his earthly life. Jesus has set the example that I desire to follow in my ministry. However, I know that I do not glorify God in everything that I do. But I have also become more aware that I am accepted and loved by God whether or not I feel I am accepted and loved by God. I'm going to repeat that because I think we all need to hear that. We are accepted and loved by God whether or not we feel that we are accepted and loved by God. Thanks be to God for that revelation. Glory to you, Lord. Amen. Would you sing as you are willing and I'm sorry, would you stand as you are willing and able and sing with us our next song of worship, He Is, is He Worthy? Do you feel the world is broken? We do. Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. Do you wish that you could see it all made new?
is all creation groaning it is is a new creation coming it is is the glory of the lord to be the light within our midst it is is it good that we remind ourselves of this it is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave, he is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? of all blessing and honor and glory is he worthy of this he is does the father truly love us he does does the spirit move among us it does and as Jesus our Messiah, hold forever those he loves, he does. Does our God intend to dwell again with us? He does. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He is David's fruit and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. From every people and tribe, every nation and tongue, he has made us a kingdom and priests to God to reign with the Son. Is He worthy? Is He worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is He worthy? Is He worthy? Is He worthy? Is he worthy of Please be seated. Just take a deep breath in. Breathe in the Holy Spirit. And let us breathe out all anxiety, any uncertainty, and anything negative. And let us let the Holy Spirit move within and amongst us, and let us pray. O oh God, you who are above all time and space, you who acted first, and you, Lord, initiated this relationship of love and generosity with all creation at a time before we were ever aware or could ever know. O oh, Holy Spirit, through your word, you continue an eternal love for all human beings, every one of us. So fill us. Fill us with a deep and an abiding awareness of your presence, 
of your call and of your grace in our lives and in this world. Come, Holy Spirit. Shape us and guide us towards the people you have made us to be, your beautiful and redeemed creation through the grace of Jesus Christ, who love mercy, who do justice, and who work with you for the redemption of all the world. And now, Lord, hear us. Hear us as we pray together for your beloved who are in need of your healing, of your compassion, and of your mercy. Oh Lord, we lift before you this morning Marie and Carolyn and Barbara and Joe. Pour out your grace upon Joan and Rosie and Tom and Bev. Lord, hear our prayers for Margaret and her son, for Steve, and for Paula. Lord, we continue to pray for Kate and Joanne and Diane, for Marion and Ross, for Stephen and for Kaya and baby Hudson. Lord, your love is always at work in ways seen and unseen to transform our hearts, to heal us, and to give us that joy, that joy and that peace that we have only only through Jesus the Christ. So Lord, as we come to you, we now lift silently before you those things on our hearts to ask for your help and your guidance and your strength. Hear us now, Lord. We do give you all honor and glory, Lord God Almighty, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and ever-present Holy Spirit. Hear us, receive us, and give us a sign that your love is working in our lives and in the lives of those that we lift to you this morning. We ask all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art Lord in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth, earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. bread. And, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. us. And, and lead, lead us, us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. For, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would you stand as you are willing and able for our closing hymn, O Love How Deep, number 267.
turn my microphone. Oh, there it's on. Good. I was going to check it. I want to say thank you for staying with me. This was a bit of a longer message this morning, but I was compelled to preach this. This is what God gave me to give to all of you. I believe it's extremely important for us to be able to articulate what we believe and why we believe it, because that's how we're able to share our faith. Now, I did it in a much longer way that I not necessarily would do with my next door neighbor, okay? But I'm grateful that you're here this morning, and I pray that as you go out into the world, that you will take the blessing that God has given through this worship service, however God gave it, through whatever portion of the service he gave it, and share that blessing with others so that others may also come into God's kingdom. Thanks be to God for our hearing and our understanding of his holy word. Amen. If you are willing and able, would you please be seated for our postlude? 